name is Vicki McCarty, and I'm the owner and designer of Calico Patch Designs. And today I want to show you how to do uh, chicken scratch, the chicken scratch snowflake for uh, Snow Much Joy. So if you look here, what I want to show you is we're going to fold this in half. We need to find the center of our block. What is that? I'm going to fold it both ways. All right. Now, right there's the center of my block. So I'm going to be off center just a little bit because I need to start out, according to my pattern, I need to start out with a dark square. So this is my um, clover uh, tailor's chalk that I use. And mine gets broken a lot because I travel with it a lot, but it makes it very sharp and I'm okay with it. I'll use it anyway. So then once I do that, I also have my lanyard with my needle threader on it and my scissors that I wear around my neck so I can keep up with my little thread scissors and my needle threader. I've got my thread and let's see. Well, hmm. trying to locate my needle here. Here's my needle. So you want to Get you a long piece of thread here. And I'll try to show you my needle threader here if I can. So I place that in the eye of my needle. I lay my thread over top of a little hook and pull it through. And that's how easy it is to thread my needle. So with that attached to my lanyard, that's how I thread my needles. No biting or trying my best to get it attached. All right, so now that I have it here, now I'm going to bring in my little pillow. I always sew on a pillow in my lap, so I have something to rest my hands on. So now here's what I want to do. I'm going to come in and I'm going to mark the middle because I know all the handling that I'm going to do for this little chicken, fret, chicken scratch snowflake, it's going to rub off my chalk. So I'm going to bring it, my thread to the top. I'm going to do a little French knot here in the center just to mark the center of it. All right, and there's the center of my square. Now that's where the wool will be applicate on top so you won't see it. So what I want to do now, according to my pattern is, I want to come out, come here just a second, make sure that I'm figuring this out right. I want to come out of my center and go I'm just going to take a little running stitch and I'm going to go to the edge the little squares in the cal in the gingham will keep you from having to mark your uh, fabric because you're going to use the squares so you want straight line across you want to do according to the pattern I need one two three four running stitches so this will be the first one here so this is one through the gray will be two, three, I forgot to put my thimble on. There's three of them, you see there, and that will be the fourth one, okay? All right, so now <clears throat> the first one, the first one, three passed. Uh, all right. So now, according to my diagram, I need to do the same thing in this direction, this direction, and this direction, according to diagram one with our pattern. So I'll turn it around. I'll come back in here. All right. And I will go against my French knot again. I will go in the gray. I will do one. I go under the dark, the dark square and only stitch in the, my running stitch in the gray. So there was one, this is, oops, this is two, three, and back down makes four. Uh-oh, I don't have that one in the center. You wanna be as close to the center of that little square as you can. All right, now I'm gonna turn around. There's my stitches, I'm hoping you can see that. And then I'm going to pull my thread. And there you go. So, now according to the diagram, I have 
four running stitches this way and four this way. I'll need four this way and four that way. So I will get those stitched out and come back and show you the next step. Okay, so now we have placed, in, uh, placed our stitches in a little X um, shape here. Um, we have just our running stitches, and you can see they're in the gray blocks. There is our center knot to show the center of our square. That's always helpful for us. Now, I have to put this in a hoop at this point. It's just a whole lot easier to stitch. Um, this is a five inch hoop. It's called a Morgan hoop, but it has ridges in it that holds the fabric into place when I get it in there and I don't have to worry about it coming out. Um, it's my favorite little hoop. It's the five inch hoop. Um, now I've tried to place it in the center of my hoop um, for you guys who are um, that do a lot of wool and maybe not do as much embroidery. This is um, this is how you kind of keep this tight and keep it from moving, and you can stitch a little faster and maybe not um, cause a lot of puckering. Um, I do not have. Um, any stabilizer on the back of these. I just never have had to have any. Um, it's all personal preference. If you would like to put the stabilizer on the back, you can at this point. Um, the reason I like the chicken scratch so much is I can do this all without marking anything other than that center point and use these squares to uh, create my pattern. Okay, so we have everything we need for diagram one. Now diagram two shows us that we need to put a star stitch in every one of these little, in three, well not every one, three in a row between our, our um, running stitches. So here's what I'm going to show you. So what I do when I do these is I start out at a corner of the dark square and I want to make an X. This is a little awkward doing it standing up so I apologize. I make a little X so I come back up to that corner with that, with that stitch. I make the X here. I come back in right where my running stitch is. And there's that X. I go back down where the other running stitch on the other side is. I come up at the top in the middle and then go back down at the bottom. Uh oh, something I forgot to tell you to do. So whenever I put a hoop on, I usually turn the hoop around so that I can keep the um, mechanism that keeps that tightens it up, the bolt and everything out of the way, because I have a tendency of throwing my thread to the top. That way I don't have to worry about getting it hooked. All right, so I need three of these, so I'm going to come up in the corner of that um, corner of that dark square. I'm going to come up there back down in this corner. And like I said, it's a little awkward, so I apologize. Crazy. Huh? Crazy. Okay. Do you need me to do something different? No, just, it won't stop. It's like zoom and zoom and zoom. Okay. Well, it's okay. Just back up a little bit. Um, okay. Now we're going to do our little stitch there. Would it help if I took it down to the table, Tom, and didn't have it on this pillow so it was more steady? Would that help? Okay, so there's that star stitch. All right, now I'm going to do the next star stitch. I'm going to turn it around. I came up in the dark corner. I'm going down in this corner. I'm coming up in this corner. There's that. There's that in the center again and back down. Now, it doesn't matter which order you do it in, just as long as you do the X first and then the, and then the plus first. Um, now something I just realized I did that I didn't need to do, I didn't need to put one right here. It happened in some of the others that I did. I should have skipped that one because our little wool circle goes right here. So that'll be covered up with the wool circle. So I have to come out here and do four on this one just because I added an extra one. Although you'll not see it, it's okay. I'll know it's in there. That's all that matters. All right, so I'm going to come up here, this corner, 
come down here in this corner. All right, went to the middle, across to the middle, back to the top in the middle of that dark square, and come right down where that running stitch is, okay? All right, so I'm gonna tie a knot. I'm all about just doing a little French knot. You know, the back of my pieces don't look as good as the front. They never have. I never do take the time, I guess, to make them look that way. Um, so if you come to look at the back of mine, you might as well expect it not to be very pretty. All right, I'm gonna tie another knot. I'm gonna show you one more side so I can get you started on that. And, all right, so I'm gonna come in here. I've got to do another Oh, now see what I'm getting ready to do? I'm getting ready to put the same one. Uh-uh, don't do that. We don't need that star stitch there, all right? We're to skip that one. We gotta remember that. We have to skip that one. Okay, so tie another knot, easy enough. I was just about ready to put another. This little square right here, we won't have any, we'll just have our little circle around. So I'm gonna come up here at the top. I'm gonna place it right there. I'm gonna come back in the corner of that, back up to the corner of that. I'm gonna put it in here, back to the middle, back to the middle. All right, back down to our little running stitch. All right, back up to this corner. All right, we're gonna to go to this corner, back down to the middle. All right, we're about to get this one, this side done. Okay, gotta come up right there to, I hope my head's staying out of this, but I don't think it is. It's okay, well, I um, actually, I'm gonna tell something on myself. I was at a show here recently and someone came to the booth, I did a demo, I'm gonna tell it, Tom come to the booth I was doing a demo and she after they had her and her friends had seen it and they went to sit down to eat lunch and they said they wondered if I wore a wig well guys I'm here to tell you I don't I just got a lot of hair all right so now I'm thinking we're okay all right so you can see I didn't need this one so don't do that one guys it'll tell you on your diagram it shows you not to do that one of course I did it you know, I had to mess up. So here's three here, three here. Now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna uh, pause the camera a minute. I'll stitch the rest of them in and then I'll come back and do the next section. Okay, so you can see here that I finished the three star stitches. And remember, I gave this one a fourth one. And I won't lie, I started to give one of these another one and I had to take it back out. So. If you do, it's not a big deal. Like I said, it'll cover it, it's okay. But if I look at diagram three now, you can see that I, I need to put a star stitch here and here, okay? So it's straight across from this one. I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna put a star stitch here. And we've all done star stitches, we know what these are. We know how to do them. And it's kind of a little nicer because we actually have a pattern now instead of guessing where we're gonna put them. So that little dark gray square gives us a way to um, where to start and stop. Okay, so there's that one. All right, and now I'm gonna come over here right across from it. Right across from it. And then I'm going to give it another one right here. Bolt of the embroidery hoop, so there we go. Up here. And then down right here. All right. Oops. Trying to hold it down on that pillow and not pull it up. Okay. So now you can see I've got two, one on each side of the middle one. Okay. And that will do diagram three. So we'll stop for a second. I'll get those stitched in and we'll come right back. Okay, now as you can see, I've went ahead and added the star stitches to each side here, okay? Now in diagram four, it tells me that I need to add a little, it's kind of like a lazy daisy stitch. Um, I'll just have to show you. 
it's a lazy daisy stitch, but you kind of hook it on the stitch in up at top. The reason you have the little star stitches is that you use the little stitches that are in the corners to um, to tack these down on. Like I'm going to go right underneath here. Now I'm not sewing it. I'm just going under the stitch. And then I'll come back down here. I'll go back under the stitch down here and not pull real tight and go straight down. And there's the little lacy stitch. All right, you see that? So that will give us that stitch. All right. Now, according to my diagram on diagram four, I need to do another one of those right here. And it doesn't matter if you start at the at which end. It doesn't make any difference. You'll never notice. Um, so I'm going to start on this end. I'm going to right there. I'm going to hook underneath that lazy day or that star stitch on that corner. And I'll just loop it around. Now you don't want to pull it real tight, but you want to make sure that it lays flat. Then I'm going to come back down here. I'm going to go back under the corner stitch on the star stitch, and I'm going to pull it a little tight, and I'm going to go straight down into my fabric. So there's those two little loops. It's just that easy. All right, now I want to have a place because um, I wanted to have, I kind of dreamed this little pattern up because you usually don't make snowflakes out of chicken scratch. Um, so I wanted to be able to add beading and have it look more like a snowflake. So on the ends out here, I decided what I would do is I would have those extend out to the middle of this stitch, of uh, the middle of that square right there. I hope you guys can see that, the middle of that square right there. And then I'll start up there. I'll take just a, uh, tuck it under that corner stitch, just like we did before, not actually taking a stitch. Pull it tight, go right back up to the middle of that white square, top corner, and there it is. Now I have a place to add my two beads. Okay, so now I want to flip it over. Uh, just for time's sake, I'm not going to tie a knot. I think I'll just go ahead and take it underneath some of the stitching here. I don't know if y'all ever do that or not. Take it underneath some of the stitching on this star stitch here. Turn it around. I've got my thread all wadded up now. All right, and then I'm going to come up here to the middle of this one. Trying so hard to keep this laying flat. All right, let's see if I can do it without pulling it back out. All right, I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to go underneath the corner again, that corner stitch of that star stitch. I'm going to pull it down. I'm going to come up here and go right up here in the middle there. Okay, I'm going to pull it straight down. All right, and that is going to give me my spaces for the two beads. Now, that's, oh, nope, we got one more thing to do. My bad. You got to come up here. Uh, let's see. I don't know. Okay. You got to come up here on this one, and you're going to go all the way to the point up at the uh, top of your snowflake. You're going to go all the way to the point of that gray square. I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to go under the middle stitch the, of the star stitch. In the middle stitch, again, I'm not making a stitch. I'm just going underneath and looping. And I'm gonna go right back in the point of that one. And pull it down. All right, so you can see the snowflake starting to take shape. I'll put a bead in each one of these at the end. And then what I need to do now is according to the pattern, I've gotta go around and do, in diagram four, all four of these. So let me get that done. And then I'll come back and do the next one. Okay, now you can see that I've went back and I've added my little lazy daisy stitches and I added my little um, running stitch out here. Well, it's I don't it's not a running stitch; it's more like a lazy half of a lazy daisy because it hooks underneath those stars. I guess I should have said. So we've got all of that done, and that was what was in diagram four. Now for diagram five, we need to start this little section of our snowflake. So what we need to do is do a is a, do a star stitch here, here, and here. So it'll be diagonal, there'll be three star stitches out diagonally in each 
one. So I'm going to do my X first. So I'll start with the X. There's that. I'll do the, do the first three and give you guys an idea how to do it, and then we'll be able to move on. I hope that you enjoy this. I think it's just a really neat way to embellish our wool that, I don't know, that most people probably haven't ever thought of yet, but um, it's just tying in another embroidery, type of embroidery stitches to our wool. And I think it kind of gives it a delicate look. So I think we'll be adding this again to something. All right, we're about to get there. And I go back up here. All right. I still, I'm, even though that I don't need a thimble on to, to um, be able to stitch this, I still wear it. Um, when I stitch, I feel kind of lost without it because I do use it, the side of it, to push my uh, needle through. So, uh-oh, what kind of stitch was that, Vicki? Oh, my. All right, back it back out. That's easy enough. I know y'all never, y'all never make a mistake and take wrong stitches like that. <laughs> All right. I would be lost without my needle threader. All right. Now, I should have went across where I went down. I went across, and then I go up. Oops. Got a little happy there. A little speedy. And then down here. All right. So let me pull this through and show you. All right, so you can see you've got three diagonal uh, star stitches here. We'll put them on each corner. And remember, now this one was not supposed to be there, so pretend it's not there. Uh, I don't want you to think you had to put that, but if you did put them there, it's okay. And we will um, stop a second. I'll go back and put all this in, and then I'll come back and show you the next step. Okay. Now you can see that I've added all of my little star stitches and a diagonal to create like a little X, just like you see in diagram five. So then the next step I need to do is add the little lazy daisy stitches, you know, that loop into the star stitches. I added one, one here and one here just on the, the um, star stitches we just made. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to go up here. Remember, I'm not taking a stitch. I'm just going underneath this star stitch and looping it around, kind of like a lazy daisy. Well, if I can do it, I'm trying to do it without getting all the other stitches. Star stitch in there. And around here, remember, uh-oh. Remember, don't pull it really tight because you want it to have that little puff. That one's a little too tight there, you can see. You want it to look more like this, so don't pull it really tight. Take a stitch down to hold it. Up, oh, there's where you get it tight. I pull in the stitch tight. And then I'm going to come up right there at the corner of that star stitch. I'm going to go under this one and loop around under this one. Again, I didn't take any stitches in the fabric. I'm just making a loop through the star stitch, pull it just a little bit, take that stitch, and there we go. Now, let's see. Well, no, we didn't do that on that one. Okay, so that's all we're gonna do is, I need to go back now and do the same thing between these two, these two, and these two. So, and then we'll show you the next step. Okay, so now you can see we've added the little lazy daisy loops uh, in between the little star stitches. So that would finish up all of diagram six. So now on to diagram seven, the same little uh, stitches that I call them a half lazy daisy, the little stitches we put here, we have to put inside here to have our uh, uh, 
little pointed edges on our snowflakes. So what I'm going to do is show you, and all it is is a, um, it is kind of like a long stitch, but it's done a little different. I call it a long stitch. So I'm going to go to the dark square. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go right into the center of the bottom half of that, uh, bottom point of that lazy daisy. And I'm going to pull it down. I'm going to go up here. I'm going to go in the dark point up there. Oh. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go right there. Same place on the other side, of, right down in the middle of that bottom end of that lazy daisy. And there's that stitch. Okay. All right. So now we're going to do the same thing again. We've got to go to the dark point here. And we need to come right down in the bottom corner of that little lazy daisy. We're going to do the same thing here. I'm going to come in up here to the dark corner of that, the corner, corner of that dark square. And then I'm going to come down here, go right back down into the corner, the tip end of that lazy daisy, like so. Now all we need is the one for up there. And we actually did it and it goes all the way, it goes to the middle, to the middle of that square, the white square. Now I'm going to turn it around a little bit because I'm going to go under the star stitch just like we've been doing. I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to go right across from it on the other side in the middle of that white square. And then that's going to be where we're going to add our beads. So all we did really was add the little lazy days or the little points to our little snowflake. And then we've got to go back now and put them on the other three that we just added the lazy daisies to. And that'll be that section of our star. Okay, so as you can see now, I've went back and added my little points to my um, snowflake. And now the only thing that's really left is I need to go back and applique my little wool center on there. Now we are going to send you an update on the pattern on that. We have a larger uh, wool center piece and then it's got to be a lot smaller. So please check my website. I'll post it here on um, Snow Much Joy also, but you will need to use a smaller one. If you use the larger one, it'll cover up a lot more of your snowflake and you'll probably realize that when you do it. But uh, please watch for that and I apologize for that, but for some reason I sent you the, a larger one. So and then you're going to actually come back and add, we've sent you little silver snowflakes if you bought the kits to add to that. And so all you will need to do, I'm sorry, it's not beads, not snowflakes. Thank you, Tom. So what I'm going to show you here, this is the way it will look. There's the wool center that you'll put in there and then you will use the silver thread that we added in your thread kits to add um, the little um, stitches in the wool and then add the little silver beads to it. And then the directions will tell you how to what to stitch on the corners and stitch them down and flip them out. And then they will be ready to put in your um, Snow Much Joy quilt. And I think that that kind of concludes what we have about that. I want to talk to you about a couple of other things while we're looking down here. This is the thimbles that I use. Um, they're very inexpensive. They're made by Deal. Oh, by the way, I was going to tell you if y'all are here to look at my nails, you probably need to go to a different YouTube video. I don't think they're in pretty good shape, but that's okay. This is the thimbles that I like to use. They're, called, they're made by Deal Company, the button company. And, um, but they mold to fit whatever shape your finger is. If you have an arthritic finger or a, you know your fingers are just not straight, which mine's, mine's not, um, but they mold to fit whatever shape your finger. And I will tell you that I've washed them in the washing machine and dried them and they do really well. So those are on my website 
for sale. This is, like I said, the lanyard that I wear. These are the Karen K. Buckley scissors. I have those on my website also. They're serrated, but they're really nice to cut. Um, when you're cutting threads, the thread doesn't move. It kind of stays right there in place. If I'm trying to cut uh, a little piece off the wool or just little threads, it will stay in place. But my biggest thing on the lanyard is I also have this um, needle threader. And that way, no matter what um, I, I'm not losing my needle threader and my scissors as I'm sitting in my seat, whether we're driving in the RV or whatever, I'm not going to, f to lose them. They're around my neck and I'm not going to be sitting on them. So that's my favorite thing to have. Um, and I think other than that, um, oh, the hoop. We was talking about the hoop. That hoop that I was telling you about is, like I said, it's a Morgan hoop. Um, let's see if I can pull it back out of there. But it, this is the five inch hoop and you can't put this piece in much bigger than the five inch hoop, but it is also for sale on my website. You'll find it. Um, now I also want to talk to you about the backing fabric. We've had several people ask us about the backing. The backing fabric, you need three yards of it and it is $38.97 for the three yards and that will back your Snow Much Joy quilt. Um, if you would like a different color, this was what was in the quilt. If you would like a different color, um, just feel free to call a shop and we'll see what we have available. But um, this is the one I recommend. I think it would look the best um, with the binding that we're putting on it also. So that is also on our website. And then I wanna show you something new that I have. This is, and you all know how much I love the Eleganza threads. So they have a new, um, couple, four new thread packs that they've come out with, and these are all um, variegated. So you'll find them on my website. They're absolutely gorgeous, and they would go with anything. And what are they a piece, Tom? Is it 44? I think it's $44 a box. Like this one is meadow and it's all the greens. This one is called uh, Canyon. It's all the oranges and the golds. This one is called Celestial and it is all the blues and the purples. And then this one is Passion and it's all the pinks and the reds and the purples mixed in too. I just love it. So those are available on my website. Um, I'd like to give you us another little sneak peek, um, kind of get you ready for the next stitch along that's coming along. You know, um, this is some new fabrics that I just got in, that I actually got in before they came out actually. So our newest stitch along will be made with these homespuns and it'll be starting in September. So you'll have to watch, and I, and I know that you can tell by looking at this that it's gonna be something to do with, you're back up at the top, something to do with Halloween. So keep an eye out for that. That's coming along, and it'll be, uh, Julie and I will do it together. So um, it's gonna be lots of fun. You're gonna love this, especially if you love Halloween. Um, if you would, take a look at our website, go to our website and check it out. We have lots of uh, other stitch alongs that we do. We've always got something fun going on. Uh, please be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel that you've seen this on. Um, please follow me on Facebook, <clears throat> visit calicopatchdesigns.com. And uh, oh, one more thing I wanted to tell you. Um, I have switched fabric companies and I'm now with uh, Henry Glass and this fall I'm so excited to tell you um, I can't give you any other details but I will have my own fabric and wool line it's going to be flannels and I've got my own line of wool coming out to coordinate with the flannels that I've designed and that we were going to we're going to premiere it at market in Houston in October um, I think it will be in the shops sometime I don't know February March we've not got the details down on that um, but the but the fabrics are beautiful the 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 wools are premium wool and they just they're 
They feel so nice and I'm so excited. So please watch for that. And I'm sure I'll sneak, send little sneak peeks out here and there when I can. So thank you all so much for doing the Snow Much Joy with us. Um, we can't thank you enough when we feel really blessed that, that you like what we do that much. I want to thank Tom for all of his hard work on all of these patterns and all of these these <clears throat> crazy ideas that I come up with that he kind of keeps following along with me and, and making them become a reality. So uh, thank you so much again, and God bless. Mm-hmm.